There's three important principles in object-oriented programming, or OOP, or OOP. Uh, one's polymorphism. The second one's inheritance, which I covered largely in uh, Cyborg Magus C Sharp Edge Video 9. And the third one's encapsulation. And we're talking about polymorphism in this uh, video. The polymorphism actually exists in several different areas in C Sharp. For instance, polymorphism in objects involves inheritance and subclassing, which we've already largely covered in video 9. But what we're mainly talking about in this video is polymorphism in functions, which involves overloading. And the concept of overloading really in, means using different function signatures in order to change which function gets called. So you have a number of different functions and based on what parameters get passed to them and the types of parameters and that sort of thing the different functions get selected. That's very similar to operator overloading which you've already seen quite a bit. For instance the plus operator. If you have two strings with a plus in between then the plus operator becomes string concatenation. But if you have two integers with a plus in between them, the plus operator becomes summing up integers. In order to illustrate this, I just have a simple form with one button. And if we look at the event handler for this button by double clicking on it, you'll see I have a series of uh, different types of data and then I have a call to what looks like exactly the same function which is polymorph and if you type polymorph in you'll see something interesting it comes up with a uh, up and down arrow and it has the initial form of polymorph which involves no parameter but if we go to the next one it involves a parameter that's a byte and we go to the next one that involves a parameter that's a double. If we go to the next one it involves a parameter that's an int. The fifth one there's a parameter that's a string. The sixth one involves two parameters. One's a string and one's a byte. And the final version involves two parameters which are two strings. So you can type any of these in in order to make a polymorph call. And I've already pre-done this. Uh, in the case of arg byte, it refers to the byte variable, arg int, the int variable, arg double, the double variable, and the string variable, and so on. This is the two-string version. And in this case, I have a string variable and a string literal, which will access the, uh, the two-string uh, version. If we look at the um, actual functions of polymorph above, you have uh, the byte version that has the byte parameter here, the int version that has the int parameter, the double version that has the double parameter, and so on. And in every case, I just pop up a message box that says the polymorph function with the double parameter, indicating which one got called, you know, polymorph function with the int parameter, and so on. And in terms of function signatures, the return value is also part of the function signature. For instance, I could have here one function that said uh, public string polymorph and then two string variables. And in terms of defining a delegate, that would be a different function. But in terms of polymorphism, it'd be the same. And the reason for that is that if I go down here and I put a return value on this it's indistinguishable from not putting a return value on it. I could do it either way so it becomes ambiguous to try and use the return value for polymorphism. Well let's uh, save this and compile and run it and then we press the button and we see the first call is the byte parameter so it's going through each of these in turn, the int parameter, the double parameter, the string parameter, the string and byte parameter, 
which using multiple uh, arguments can also be a way of using polymorphism. Three arguments is different than two. It's a different signature. And then finally the two string parameter and the function that returns a string. But the main thing about this isn't that it returns a string but it then has no parameters. So that's what makes it a different uh, function signature in terms of polymorphism. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.